Before we start to council meeting, I'd just like to address one thing, and I always like to recognize our outstanding employees with the city of Sheboygan. And tonight, we have one that works down in the IS department, Joanne Decker. And she got the U.S. Air Force E Award for our, her outstanding work with the Army. She's been out for, well, she's back now, but she was out as a reservist, correct, Ed, for a year. And uh, we got a letter from the Pentagon addressing the medal. So if anyone would like to take a look at it, uh, come on up and read the letter, look at it, and this will be put in her file. I think that's a great accomplishment that uh, they do that for our employees. So. Give her a hand, Joanne, if you're watching. Oh, okay. Okay, with that, we'll start the 19th regular meeting of the Common Council. Pat, would you call the roll? Bauman? Here. Deberg? Here. Eberg? Here. Doyle? Here. Manny? Here. Moody? Here. Perez? Here. Ports? Here. Schultz? Here. Stephan? Here. Devin Akron? Here. Steven Akron, yes. Vanderweel, yes. Wangaman, yes. Warner, yes. Winninger, yes. 16 present. Quorum's present. Alderman Van Akron. Thank you, Your Honor. I would move that we approve the minutes of the previous meeting and as entered on the record. To move to second that we accept the minutes of the past council meeting and seem stand approved under discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Pledge? Alderman Baldwin, would you lead us in a pledge, please? I forgot. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'd like to just recognize one of our aldermen, Alderman Van Akron's wife, Nita, is in a hospital again in Milwaukee, correct, Don? Uh, she's doing better. Don told me this evening she possibly will come coming home this weekend. Possible. And everything's going all right now. So I hope everything works out well and she's home with you soon. Thank you. Uh, okay. Next thing we have the hearing. We have. A hearing tonight to rezone property located between New York Avenue and Wisconsin Avenue between North 10th Street, North Water Street, and North 11th Street. Any interested parties wishing to be heard on a hearing? Any interested parties wishing to be heard on a hearing? Alderman Schultz. Thank you, Your Honor. I make a motion hearing be closed. Second. Moved and seconded that the hearing be closed under discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion here. <coughs> Public forum, Pat. Yeah. Okay, consent agenda. Everything from 19.1 through 19.14. Alderman Van Akron. Thank you, Your Honor. I would move that we accept and file all ROs, accept and adopt all committee reports, and all resolutions and substitute resolutions be put upon their passage. Moved and second to accept and adopt all RCs, accept and file all ROs, passed as resolutions and substitute resolutions. Under discussion, Alderman Warner. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. I would like to pull 19.8 for a separate vote. Alderman Warner. Uh, first, uh, Your Honor, I would like to read what this resolution is allowed so the public is aware of what it states, and then I have some comments. Okay. This is a resolution reaffirming the October 7, 2002 unanimous vote of the City of Sheboygan Common Council to forward the City County Coalition proposed agreement for ambulance service to Orange Cross Ambulance. Whereas, it is in the best interest of the City of Sheboygan and its citizens and visitors to ensure the provision of emergency ambulance services through a written agreement, and whereas the proposed agreement is similar in scope to the contract honored for the past decade which ensured the provision of dedicated, verifiable, and guaranteed ambulance service. And whereas the provision of quality ambulance service requires the guarantee and agreement provides to maintain a prescribed availability and level of service across the entire city of Sheboygan. Whereas without a legal binding agreement, the citizens of the city of Sheboygan will have no guarantee of continued ambulance service 
and without said agreement, the provider may discontinue service without notice for any reason at any time. Now therefore be it resolved that the Common Council of the City of Sheboygan reaffirms the need for an ambulance service agreement and views said agreement as a necessary component to ensuring the health and welfare of its citizens. Be it further resolved, the Common Council of the City of Sheboygan directs the City Attorney to forward the proposed contract to Orange Cross for further review and make the document public. Under discussion, Your Honor, this resolution does reaffirm the October 7th de decision of the Common Council to move forward with and enter into agreement with Orange Cross Ambulance to provide emergency ambulance service to the City of Sheboygan. We believed then, and I believe now, it is very important to the health and safety of the people we represent that this city have an ambulance provider that is legally bound to provide service. There are many reasons why an agreement to provide service is essential, but foremost is the very lives of our citizens. We need an agreement that guarantees ambulance service, not one that simply says, oh yeah, by the way, we will provide the service for you just like always. What kind of dedicated and guaranteed service is that? If you say you will, then you should have no problem putting it down on paper in a way that legally binds you to do so. In the proposed agreement, the provider could not simply discontinue service. They had to provide advance notice, allowing us to prepare for their departure. Without an agreement, they can discontinue service at virtually any time. In the proposed agreement, the coalition was guaranteed the use of the ambulances and equipment for six months if the provider decided to discontinue service. This is the same as in the previous agreements. In the proposed agreement, response times for emergency 911 calls in the city of Sheboygan were to be six minutes. The same as the last 10 years. Without an agreement, there is no response time requirement. A provider can respond whenever and however they want. A major reduction in service. In the proposed agreement, there was a review process, a process to address quality of service issues and a way to solve service provision problems. Without an agreement, we will get whatever the provider wants to give us. I believe we need an agreement that provides the same benefits and level of service that the contract of the last 10 years provided. This council agreed with that last October 7th. And I ask for your support in sending the proposal to Orange Cross asking one more time for them to reconsider. Let's give the proposal to the public and the media. I hardly believe we are wrong in wanting to guarantee the existence of reliable ambulance service for our city. Thank you. Alderman Schultz. Thank you, Your Honor. I don't know what Alderman Warner's point is in making all those comments right now. He just came from a meeting where uh, the contract or a proposed contract was talked about and Orange Cross did agree to take it back and they are going to uh, review it and come back re and respond to the city. So uh, everything that he said, uh, Orange Cross is hopefully going to address and hopefully we will get a contract. It's unfortunate that it has dragged out this long. It should not have, um, but we can't turn back. Uh, hopefully, I agree, we need a contract. It's in the best interest of the city and uh, for our citizens. Uh, we do need a contract for, with the ambulance service and hopefully they will come back with it. I think we need to, again, as I've stated before, we, look in, we need to look at our service providers as partners. We can't look at them as adversaries. And I think in the past some of that has happened and uh, we need to get away from that. And I, I hope we will, we are and we will, and I hope Orange Cross also does uh, look at us as a partner as we look at them as a partner in providing good ambulance service for our citizens. Thank you, Alderman Charles. Alderman Doyle. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Um, <clears throat> when that vote was taken uh, last fall, or whenever it was, that followed a, a committee of the whole meeting, and perhaps I'm hard of hearing, perhaps I was led down the primrose path. At that meeting, I read the contract after Steve explained it. I was reading through it, and it was clearly uh, that the language was, I felt, highly unfavorable to Orange Cross and lay down parameters that they couldn't meet uh, without great difficulty. I raised that question at that meeting and said, is Orange Cross really buying into this contract? 
and I don't want to quote people because that was quite a while ago, but the gist of the reply was that, yes, Orange Cross knows about the conditions in this contract, and it's largely acceptable to them. Well, in the events that followed, uh, I found out that Orange Cross largely wasn't in the negotiating room that much, that invariably they were in the hallway. And second, they turned down that contract, which means that it was not acceptable to them. And so I, can't, I certainly agree that we need a contract, but I don't think that the proposed contract is necessarily fair and that we need to get back and negotiate fairly with Orange Cross. Thank you, Alderman Boyle. Alderman Warner. Thank you, Your Honor. First, I would like to answer Alderman Schultz. The reason that I felt this necessary is because I think the public has missed some of the factual things that have taken place over the past year and a half. And it actually has been that long that we've been talking about an ambulance contract. It didn't really pick up steam until last spring, but that's natural as it's getting closer. Uh, I guess it was a surprise to many that Orange Cross decided they did not need a contract, but it was not a surprise to everyone. They have made statements in the past that they would provide service even without a contract, as, at least as long ago as last June. That makes me wonder, though, was this their end game or their plan? I kind of think it was. It's my belief that their goal all along was to get out of the contract and to do so by splitting the coalition in two, thus making it look like we, the coalition, did, could not agree, which we did. We came together on it. Orange Cross knew, knew right off that the contract was virtually the same as the one they lived under the last 10 years with some verbiage changes and some improvements in service that they had agreed to all along and up to that point. I believe we need to have a, an agreement that guarantees that ambulance service will be provided to the people in the city of Sheboygan. Not one that just says uh, that we'll use your 800 megahertz radios and we won't, and we'll hold you harmless if you drive our ambulances for us, but not, but we need one that says you will be here to provide service to us. So I think we should send this back to them. That doesn't mean that it can't be changed or negotiated, but I think they should take another look at it. Thanks. Thank you. Alderman Stephan. Uh, yeah. Uh, speaking on this, I, I do think that we've got to send a message to Orange Cross and to the community in, in general that, you know, we want this contract and yet we haven't changed. We're not asking for anything like Alderman Doyle thought. You know, to my knowledge, I mean, and I haven't been privy to all the conversations and all the meetings. I'm not on strategic fiscal. But we're not asking for the sun, the stars, and the moon here. You know, like Alderman Werner said, you know, cost containment, guaranteed times, and locations of the ambulances. I mean, I have two teenage sons. I compare this to them coming home from school one day and say, Dad, don't worry, we're gonna go to school tomorrow. We're not gonna tell you what school we're going to. We're not gonna get grades, but don't worry. And by the way, leave your wallet on the desk because I don't need an allowance anymore. I'll just take whatever I think is fair and I need it. That's what Orange Cross is telling us. We'll take care of things, we're trustworthy, and they have been, but we don't wanna, you can't judge us. You can't control the costs. How many citizens out there watching tonight know that if Orange Cross has their way, they make their own prices? There's no control. They can charge whatever they want. And what's the alternative to the guy with the heart attack? To argue about it later on? I just think we have to come to an agreement with Orange Cross. They have to see that, you know, we want a deal, they want a deal. I apologize. I made some comments earlier on thinking the county wasn't with us. I've been very impressed talking to people from the county. They're on board. They're on our side. They see this is a joint thing with it. Orange Cross, and I think, you know, they're with us, they understand the problems. I think we need to get Orange Cross on board and see if this, you know, we're done playing games, we want a contract. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman Van Akron. First of all, a question. Steve, a lot of the discussion we had about with Orange Cross and the contract proposals that they gave to us were in closed sessions. Are we able to talk about that now? Um, Say so yes, and it might be a long night. <laughs> you know, I, I don't know about the details of what took place in the meetings, but certainly the, uh, the document itself, I think, uh, is out there. The, the proposal that the coalition submitted to them, uh, I don't see any problem with discussing that. Their counter proposal? Uh, even their counter proposal, I don't think that they've ever said that that's not public information or not for us to uh, share that with anyone. Uh, you know, that's 
their counter proposal, so I'm somewhat hesitant to talk uh, for them, but uh, you know, they submitted that to the group in, in a closed session discussion, and uh, I guess I don't know that I can answer the question as to whether or not their counter proposal is, is uh, something that they'd be willing to share with the public. I, I don't see why not, to tell you the truth. Can somebody tell me what he said? <laughs> can I talk about it or can I talk about it? I think you can talk about it. All right. Thank you. Um, much to what Alderman Stefan said and Alderman Warner said, and again, for a long time we've been sitting relatively quiet about this contract because of the closed session issues, and I'm concerned about that because we should be discussing these things in closed session, but I think since the contract negotiations have been broken off and literally have stopped, I, th I agree, and I, but I wanted you as a lawyer to say that, uh, that this should become public than what, what we've been talking about. Alderman Doyle, I disagree with you that, that the last contracts that we've sat down with Orange Cross, Orange Cross has been in those closed sessions. We went line for line, right down every line of the contract with Orange Cross. They came back with a proposal of what they thought those lines should be. And then we went through line for line again with what they had thought and what the coalition, and again, not the city, the coalition, the county and the city group thought to their response to our response. That's called negotiations. They were sitting right in there with us. So there is no myth out there that they weren't involved in this. This is their document that came back from our proposal with their concerns. And we addressed those concerns, which ones we thought were worthwhile, which ones we didn't think were worthwhile. What we wouldn't agree to is just what Alderman Warner said, is we were trying to protect what we felt was important in this contract being response times, which is one thing they were balking at and did not want to have to be held to the response times. We felt that was important. That's quality of care. Also the locations of the stations. The locations of the stations, they came to us saying they wanted to be able to put those ambulances in any location, any site, whether it be one site, two site, or three sites, that was their option. We didn't feel that was right. We thought the people in the south side still needed protection like they've been doing for the last 10 years. And this is where I disagree with you. All these things aren't new. These were all in the contract in the last contract. Correct, Steve? The last so, two. The last, there, we've had two five-year contracts. The last, well, that's 10 years. The last two five-year right. contracts, we, we address the location of these because that is important. Why do, we, why do we put fire stations way on the south side, way on the north side? It, even I can figure that out. You probably got better coverage by doing that. They didn't want to do that. They came to us asking for that to be removed. We wouldn't do that because of what we felt was the, that was important to us. The response time was important to us. The uh, rate increase, we weren't saying they couldn't increase the rates. What it says in that contract is, if it's going up, you have to come to the coalition, and they've done this for 10 years, come to the coalition and just explain why you need a rate increase. They have done that every year and have never been turned out. They have always been able to come and explain their rate, and they've got it from what I understand. Um, some, is that correct? Um, that's what we were asking. We've actually sweetened the pot on our side, saying for the, I think it was the uh, cost of living, up to the cost of living, they didn't even need anybody's approval or to explain it, they could just do that. And anything above that, they then would come to us and just explain why they needed it. And if they could come and say, this is why I need it, because our costs here went up, we're reasonable. We've been reasonable for 10 years in doing this. So that's what, from my understandings, and I've been in every one of those, those were the major hang-ups that we had and the major differences. And those differences weren't anything that wasn't already in that contract. The major differences in, in the wording of this contract was making up the city and the counties and who represented it, what, how on the board. And that board is just, um, isn't even a binding, it's just recommends back to the city and the county. 
that was the only major, ma that I saw, unless I missed something, major difference in this contract. But when it came to actual things that Orange Cross had to live up to, they signed that same contract 10 years ago. And five years after that, with those same stipulations in there. So I was surprised in the fact that this didn't happen. No controls, as Alderman Warner said, how do you now, we don't have the right to even question. If it takes them 35 minutes to get an ambulance, believe me, that can happen. If it takes them 35 minutes to get an ambulance to them, what do I do about it? Right now, I at least have a board that I can go to and say, I've had a problem here. I called an ambulance and somebody didn't show up for 35 minutes, and we've called them three times. Can you look at that? You don't have that now. You have absolutely nothing <coughs> that can look over that. They have total control of whether. Now, they, are, they have a EMS plan. I think the EMS plan says that they have to respond to most of their calls or within two minutes beyond the scene, and that's hard to understand, and 25 minutes to be there. So under their EMS plan, they have 25 minutes to respond. If that's reasonable for you, allow them to follow the EMS plan. I think it's to our, and I, and I agree with continuing this, not a, just a little bit earlier, as Alderman Schultz said, uh, the st strategic planning, voting unanimously to reinforce that we think it is important to have a contract. What that contract is, we have to sit down and negotiate with Orange Cross. Alderman Schultz is correct. We did give Orange Cross some language again, but that's negotiations. If they want to negotiate with us, we're willing to do that. But you got to have two people at the table to negotiate. So if they want to negotiate a table, a negotiate a contract, we're willing to sit down and talk to them about that. We were willing a few minutes ago. We've been willing last month. We were willing the month before that. But not having a contract, I don't think is acceptable because we are, the people that we represent have had a contract that's exactly like what we're talking about here for the last 10 years. And it's worked well because we've been able to hold them to those times and, and to the things that we thought were important 10 years ago, the things we thought were important enough five years ago, and the things that we are reassuring today that we still feel are important. And that's all we're asking for. We're not saying we're, we're, we're gonna move it or anything. We're saying we want, we think, as they say, they don't think they need a contract. We as city aldermen are saying we think it's important to have a contract. And we wanna work something out. Whether with them or whoever, we think it's that important. That's all we're asking. Thank you. <coughs> Alderman Schultz. Thank you, Your Honor. I don't know how much uh, you want to discuss this this evening because uh, Orange Cross is taking it back. They're going to reevaluate it and, and come back to the city. I disagree with almost everything that uh, Alderman Van Akron said, except when he said that I was right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, if, if we were given, if we had the same contract and was given it to Orange Cross and said, let's extend this contract for five years, I think they would have done it uh, the first day that, uh, the first meeting we ever had. Uh, Orange Cross has been at, at several meetings, closed session meetings, but there's also been, on, there's been numerous meetings, closed session meetings, where Orange Cross has been excluded. And I don't think that was fair. I think one of their concerns, and it's a major concern, I, and, and I think it's a, um, a realistic concern. Uh, as the contract and as discussions uh, went on and as the contract was worded, I think the Orange Cross was, was, had the fear that the city's goal is to have a contract with Orange Cross but train our fire department and uh, at our convenience uh, move the ambulance service into our fire department. Uh, and I think, seriously, I think that is the uh, agenda of some folks up here on this council floor. Uh, so the Orange Cross is looking out for their welfare and the city's welfare. We're looking out for the city's welfare, not necessarily Orange Cross's welfare. And that's where the conflict comes in. And uh, I, I think we have to give them a fair shake. Uh, I, I think they understand and realize, recognize that we need a contract. And hopefully they will come back with something uh, that's agreeable to both of us. It's not. 
uh, as negotiations go, it, it's, nobody ever comes out with exactly what they want. Everybody has to give a little. Um, and I think we do have a chance to do that yet. Okay. Thank you. Alderman Vanderwilly. Vanderwilly. Will. Thank you, Your Honor. The Orange Cross publicly said, publicly said that they didn't want a contract, that they were too good for a contract. So why are we still negotiating with them? If they don't want this contract, then game over. If they don't want a contract, we stop negotiating, we stop talking. And that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman Doyle. Thank you, Your Honor. Well, I'm sympathetic to Alderman Van Akron and Warner. Their stories sound wonderful. I am bothered by the fact that, that we were offering them exactly word for word the same contract and they rejected it. That doesn't sound feasible. There's three perceptions out there in the community. Uh, the first one is the community wants Orange Cross. There's absolutely no doubt about it. The second perception is they believe that the Common Council is trying to give it to the fire department. That's the second perception. The third perception that's out there is that the city is writing a contract that Orange Cross can't meet so that the city will find some reason to reject the contract. I think if we're serious about doing what the public wants, we do have to negotiate with them, but uh, I think it has to be in the open so that the truth comes out. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman Warner. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. This is the third time I'm speaking, so I know if that. I'm out of order, I ask, uh, I ask for your patience with me. Uh, as far as uh, Alderman Doyle's comments, it is true. We did negotiate with them in good faith, and the points that they brought back that they had concerns with in the contract are points that were all approved in the last two contracts. The things that we added in as changes, the major things as far as training our firefighters to work at a higher level on scene, especially when the ambulance takes a while to get there, was things they agreed to. They approved that. They didn't even question, question those facts. And as far as the fire department and their fear of that, this Common Council on October 7th voted unanimously to send the contract to Orange Cross Ambulance, not to the fire department, not to Paratech, not to uh, Gold Cross or any place else. So I think that's a moot point. Thanks. Thank you. I've only been up once. I'm still in order. <laughs> Um, I disagree with, with Alderman Schultz and Doyle again. Um, did I say that we had a word for word? No. I said the important things like the response times and the station locations and the things that we were asking for, the things I believe they're balking at are exactly word for word for what we had in the past. That I think is correct. That I think we haven't changed in, in how we've asked for those locations. Um, so. They've signed that contract, you know, you saying that we're trying to set them up to fail, I don't believe that's, that's true. I think we're doing something, and if they feel that that six minute response time, I heard them again tonight saying that they respond in most cases in three minutes, or three and a half or something, they said. Um, if, if they feel that some of these aren't reasonable, you know where they can address that at the committee and say, we need six and a half or seven and t talk to us about that. If that's their concern and if that's what they are publicly thinking is that they can't meet some of the things we're asking them of, tell me what they are and let's talk about it. But I haven't heard that from them. In their requests that I have that Steve so eloquently said I can talk about now, those aren't what they're addressing, isn't the response times and the locations, they're addressing other things. That are so. That's that's not what they're. Um, in in most of the cases, they've adopted that same language. Um, there's a few other things that they're they're looking at that are they're trying to change. Um, I think, like Alderman Warner said, we haven't been negotiating with with um, I don't know whoever Manitowoc is, Gold Cross, Blue Cross, Red Cross, whoever they are out there. We haven't been. We have as as a coalition. I thought for the first time in the long time I've been up here in the, in the city council, the city and county have really worked hard together and have come up with a um, good working relationship, uh, probably one of the best ones, and I think you'd agree, Mayor, that we've had in a long time with working with the law committee, and uh, we've gotten that same respect from the law committee, as Alderman Stephan said, that, that, and the same feeling from the law committee that we have done this jointly in the best 
interest of, of what we thought was best, negotiated with Orange Cross, not the fire department, not outside people, trying to make a contract work with Orange Cross. That was our, now if, if some of you have a hidden agenda that I'm not aware about, that, that's your hidden agenda, but it's not mine. We could discuss this to death tonight if we wanted to, but I do want to say two things. We did have a good meeting tonight, probably one of the best we had in two, three months with Orange Cross. And uh, I look forward to, to having more meetings and moving forward, and I think we will. But we all have to keep cool heads on it. Had good discussion from Chief Zire tonight, had good points, Ed Zurich, Mike Hutz, all the aldermen in that meeting, it went very well. I think we're on the right road, but we just have to take our time and make sure that everyone's comfortable when we do sign a contract. But you're right, there will be a contract with the City of Sheboygan, if not with them, with someone. So we did agree on that tonight. So with that, Pat, would you call? You don't need a roll call? I think you're going to want one. Okay. Suggested. D. Berg. Aye. E. Berg. Aye. Doyle? Aye. Manny? Aye. Moody? Aye. Perez? Aye. Ports? Aye. Schultz? Aye. Stephen? Aye. D. Van Akron? T. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderbilt? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Warner? Weininger, Aye. Bauman. Aye. 15 ayes, one no. Motion carry. All right, everything, well, maybe okay. not. <laughs> Alderman Doyle. Thank you, Your Honor. I'd like to pull uh, 1911 and make an amendment, please. Uh, on the back side, taxi cab driver's license, the bottom one, 58864. Uh, we'd like to have that removed and held for future meetings. It's moved in second. Are you, are you referring that back or are you just holding it? Referring it back. Referring back to committee, right? That, okay. that particular person back to TPNS. Okay. That license number would be referred back to committee under discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. New would, motion to accept. Now I need a new motion. Alderman Doyle? I need a new motion to pass it as amended now. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, I move that the uh, RO be passed as amended. Moved and seconded that the RO be RC. RC be accepted and adopted as amended. Under discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? I need a roll call. Eberg. Okay. Doyle. Aye. Sorry about that. Manny. Aye. Moody. Aye. Perez. Aye. Ports. Aye. Schultz. Aye. Stephen. Aye. D. Van Akron. Aye. T. Van Akron. Aye. Vanderweel. Wangaman, Aye. Warner, Aye. Wenninger, Aye. Bauman, Aye. D. Berg. Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carried. Now, if there's nothing else, everything from 19-1 through 19-14 be put up on this passage. Hearing none, would you call the roll, please? Sure. Doyle? Aye. Manny? Aye. Moody? Aye. Perez? Aye. Ports, Aye. Schultz, Aye. Stephen, D. Van Akron, T. Van Akron, Vanderweel, Wangaman, Aye. Warner, Aye. Winninger, Aye. Bauman, D. Berg, E. Berg, 16 ayes. Motion carried. 1915 to be referred. 1916 through 18 to be referred. 1919 will lie over. 1920 through 35 to be referred. 1823, an RO by City Plan Commission, recommending rezoning property located between New York Avenue and Wisconsin Avenue and between North 10th Street, North Water Street, and North 11th Street. Alderman Don Van Akron? Warner. Warner, excuse me, I'm sorry. That's right. Thank you, Your Honor. I make a motion to accept and file the report of officer and pass the attached ordinance. It's been moved to second to file the RO and pass the general ordinance under discussion. Under discussion, Your Honor. This is relative to the rezoning of property located between New York Avenue and Wisconsin Avenue and between North 10th Street and North Water Street and North 11th Street from Class UI Urban Industrial to Class UR Urban Residential Classification. This is the former Kingsbury Brewery property. 
which is owned by the Re Redevelopment Authority at this time. And the Redevelopment Authority is soliciting proposals to develop the property as single family condominiums and or apartments. And as a former industrial site, its zoning classif classification needs to be changed. Thank you. If there's no other discussion, would you call the roll, please? Manny? Aye. Moody? Aye. Perez? Aye. Ports? Aye. Schultz? Aye. Stephan? Aye. D. Van Akron? Aye. T. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Warner? Aye. Winninger? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Bauman? Aye. D. Berg? Aye. E. Berg? Aye. Doyle? Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carried. 1833, a resolution by Alderman T. Van Akron, Schultz, Perez, Doyle, and Stephan transferring appropriations in the 2002 budget. Would you like to take the next two also? Sure, thank you. Um, 1834 is also a resolution uh, by Van Akron, Schultz, Perez, Doyle, Stephan transferring appropriations in the 2003 budget. And resolution uh, 1835 is a resolution 22. 3-0203 by Alderman Van Akron, Schultz, Perez, Doyle, and Stephan transferring funds to establish est an estimated revenue and appropriations for sale of a fire truck to a fire department vehicle maintenance account. I would move that all three resolutions be put upon their passage. Moved and second to three resolutions be put upon their passage under discussion. Hearing none, Pat, would you call the roll, please? Moody, Perez, Quartz, Schultz, Stephan, D. Van Akron, T. Van Akron, Vanderweel, Wangaman, Aye. Warner, Aye. Weininger, Aye. Bauman, Aye. D. Berg, Aye. E. Berg, Aye. Doyle, Aye. Manny, Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carried. 1636 by Alderman Warner and T. Van Akron amending the municipal code relating to room tax to increase room tax from 6% to 8%. And on that document, Alderman Warner he and Van Akron, we do not have a starting date. No, no. He's going to make an amendment after he makes He'll the motion. make the amendment? Okay. Mm -hmm. We need that. Which make the motion to, to pass first. All right, thank you, Your Honor. I make a motion to uh, pass the general ordinance. Second. Moved and seconded to pass the general ordinance. Under discussion. Under discussion, Your Honor, I would, I would move that we amend the document. On section two on the back page of your document, in, a, in the last sentence, it says, all ordinance or parts thereof in conflict with the provisions of this ordinance are hereby repealed to the extent of such conflict. And this ordinance shall be in effect from and after its passage and publication as of April 1st, 2003. And the as of April 1st, 2003 is what we need to add. Correct, Steve? Right, I wanna uh, I'd recommend having a start date that provides a little lead time and also uh, the, uh, the payment and the reporting for room taxes on a quarterly basis, so April 1st would be the start of the next quarter for the room tax. And uh, I don't know, Rich isn't here, but discuss this with the finance director also, and he recommends April 1st as the start date. On that, Your Honor, I'd make a motion to pass the we general ordinance as amended. Second. You don't need it? Amendment. There you go. Amendment. Thank you. Right. It's been moved and second for the amendment under discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Okay. On that, Your Honor, I would make a motion to pass the general ordinance as amended. It's been moved and second to pass the general ordinance as amended. Alderman Doyle. Yes, sir, Your Honor. Um, that room tax um, was going to be designated for a certain purpose, uh, a okay. certain business purpose, and I uh, was 100% behind that. What would happen uh, in the event that that business situation would not work out uh, since this tax was going to be used for that purpose. If the purpose no longer existed, what would happen to this tax money and so on? Because my concern, it would just be going into the general fund and would not accomplish anything for development. Uh, I can address that, uh, Mayor. The, uh Current, we have a current contract with the Chamber of Commerce on uh, having certain amount of money go to the uh, Chamber. It goes till uh, through 2003. Uh, 2003, 2004. And provides that 
that the chamber gets 6% room tax. If we raise it, the city could retain the difference between 6% and 8%. And that would be what we'd be able to do. We'd be able to retain that, but you still under the statutes have to use uh, most of that money, uh, roughly 90%, for tourism promotion purposes, even if the city retains more money. We still have to use it for tourism-related and, and promotion of tourism-related uh, purposes. Uh, statute provides that we can use a certain percentage, it's basically 10% in our circumstance, for uh, administration and non-tourism-related purposes. Okay. So that percentage would be the same as it currently is. We currently retain 150,000 of the total we collect. We still have to use a total of 90% of all we collect for tourism promotion and development. Okay. All right, Alderman Dial. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Pat, would you call the roll, please? Perez? Quartz, Aye. Schultz, Aye. Stephan, D. Van Akron, Aye. T. Van Akron, Aye. Vanderwill, Aye. Wangeman, Aye. Warner, Aye. Winninger, Aye. Bauman, Aye. D. Berg, Aye. E. Berg, Aye. Doyle, Aye. Manny, Aye. Moody, Aye. 16 eyes. Motion carried. Okay. That D, I forgot to get back to you on that today about starting in April 1st. I apologize. I, I know you're thinking January, but like Steve said, by lead time, it's taking a little while. So just so. Okay. 1746, General Ordinance by Alderman Warner, Doyle, Vanderweel, and Manny. Add, a, add stop signs on Alabama Avenue and Kentucky Avenue before entering South 15th Street and South 16th Street. Alderman Warner. I thank Your Honor. I make a motion that General Ordinance be put upon its passage. Moved and second to ordinance be put upon its passage. Under discussion. Under discussion, Your Honor. This is an ordinance, ordinance that relates to stop signs so as to add stop signs on, on Alabama Avenue and on Kentucky Avenue before entering South 15th and South 16th Streets. This actually came to our Public Protection and Safety Committee on November 27th, and with the holidays, it was held up a little while before it got through to Council. But at the present time, there are yield signs on those two streets, and this keeps them in line with the streets to the east and west of it. I drove by there today just to refresh my memory because I haven't been over there since early December. And this just replaces four yield signs with four stop signs. It's a very quiet pocket, quiet area, but it would keep it uh, consistent with what's all around on the rest of the street. So we recommend passage. Alderman Moody. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Um, since this is our district, I was just wondering if there was a recent accident history or something that this is being changed? Uh, it came to us from Sergeant Tarkowski. It wasn't a communication from, from, uh, okay. from one of the citizens, Betty, but it, uh, it's mm -hmm. something that community policing unit driving around in that area just recognizes as, as something that okay. would benefit the neighborhood. Okay. Alderman Warner, uh, Sergeant Tarkowski is with us this evening. Do you need him to address that? Or? Do you have anything to add? Move to the second open the floor under discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Okay, thank you, Your Honor. This, this, uh, the reason for these stop signs is it brings a little bit of uniformity to that basically four to six square block area. Uh, one of those intersections in particular is uncontrolled, uh, basically came to our, con our attention both through community policing and um, Mike Hutz's office and concern from one of the residents there. Although there is no accident history which would warrant the actual installation of the signs, it just brings some uniformity to that general area. And as a neighborhood which does not affect any uh, basically heavy traffic or anything, uh, police department felt that this would be a good change for that area. Thank you. All right, if there's no other discussion, would you call the roll, please? Ports, Aye. Schultz, Aye. Stephan. Aye. D. Van Akron, Aye. T. Van Akron, Aye. Vanderweel, Wangaman, Warner, Aye. Winninger, Aye. Bauman, Aye. D. Berg, Aye. E. Berg, Aye. Doyle, Aye. Manny, Aye. Moody, Aye. Perez, Aye. 16 eyes. Motion carried. 1936 will go to Public Protection and Safety and, and Public Works. 
<laughs> thought I'd forget that, didn't you? <laughs> 1937, we'll go to finance. 1938, we'll go to special committee on risk management. Steve, other matters? 1939 is an RO by the city clerk submitting an application from Rhonda and Leon Schleider for a change in zoning classification of property located on the south side of Superior Avenue, west of North Taylor Drive from UR Urban Residential to SO Suburban Office Classification. Planning Commission. 1940 is an RO by the city clerk submitting an application from Great Lakes Physical Therapy LLC for a change in zoning classification of property located on the south side of Superior Avenue, west of North Taylor Drive from UR to SO Urban Office Classification. Land Commission. 1941 is an RO by the Finance Director Treasurer submitting the Harbor Center Marina balance sheet from operations dated November 30, 2002 as submitted by Skipper Marine. Special Marina Committee. 1942 is a resolution directing a public hearing to be held in connection with change of the city's official zoning map for property located on the south side of Superior Avenue west of North Taylor Drive. Alderman Doyle, or Bowman, these are year two, 42 and 43. 42 and 43. They can be passed. They can be passed tonight. I'm sorry. They can be passed tonight, 42 and yes. 43. Could I, could you make a motion, please? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, we, I make a motion that uh, uh, 1942 and 1943 uh, be accepted and adopted. Second. Okay. We move to second to 1942, resolution 1942 and 43. We put upon their passage under discussion. Hearing none, would, do we need a, no, we don't need a roll call. Mm -hmm. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. 1944 is an ordinance amending the official zoning map of the Sporeigan Zoning Ordinance to change the use district classification of property owned by Rhonda and Leon Schleider from UR Urban Residential to Class SO Suburban Office. Planning Commission. And 1945 is an ordinance amending the official zoning map of the Sheboygan Zoning Ordinance to change the use district classification of property owned by Great Lakes Physical Therapy LLC from Class UR Urban Residential to Class SO Suburban Office. Planning Commission also. Move to the second to adjourn under discussion. Hearing none, all in favor, done. Opposed?